Hey everyone, welcome to the Cat Cartoon Flashback, episode 5, I believe. And in the previous episodes, I have talked about Tailspin, I have talked about Sonic, I have talked about Rescue Angels, and I have talked about Transformers. Now, for the fifth episode, I want to talk about a show that ran from the late 70s to the early 80s. It was sort of a parody, if you will, sort of a parody slash satire on the Olympics. And what is the show I'm talking about? Well, none other than Laugh Olympics. Formerly known as Scooby-Doo's Laugh Olympics or Scooby-Doo's All-Star Laugh Olympics. The reason for that was back in 1977 when it first debuted, it debuted as part of a two-hour block. And within these two-hour blocks, you had the Laugh Olympics show at the beginning, inning, and you had three, maybe two cartoons in between. In other words, you actually did have two, three, you actually had three cartoons in between. Because you had the first 15 minutes of Laugh Olympics, and then the next, I'd say, hour and a half almost, an hour, if you will, was dedicated to shows like Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, uh, Scooby Doo, and I believe Dynamite and Blue Falcon. Those are the shows that they were dedicated to. Now, what you wonder why those shows were part of this block. Well, it's real simple. Because most of those characters, Scooby-Doo and the gang, along with Blue Falcon and Dynamite, and Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels, were also part of the Laugh Olympics cartoon. And like I said, when they began Laugh Olympics, it started out, like I said, the first, I think it would be like the first thing shown for 15 minutes, and then the next 15 minutes, and this would be the second half of the show. In other words, they would end it, or they'd begin another hour with that second half, or vice versa, either beginning or ended. I can't, I didn't, I don't, I really, I mean, honestly, I wasn't born when it originally aired, so I don't really know. Maybe some of you do, but I don't. But anyway, that's, but that's from what I read. It was originally at a blo like that. It was a two-hour block. Then the following year, into I think it went into a one-hour block, maybe a half-hour block, to where it was just one episode into an hour block, to where it was I think two episodes. It was mainly Laugh Olympics. And then the following year it went into just one half-hour episode of Laugh Olympics, and that was it. And it ran from 1977 to 1980. Even though one season of episodes was air was made. It re ran because of its popularity. It re ran for the next four, next three to four years on ABC Network Television, and then throughout the 80s, it got replayed in syndication on the USA Network's Cartoon Express, and then recently in 2000, in it in this century, in the 21st century, and I don't know if it's been done before, but Cartoon Network started, and I think now Boomerang started airing Laugh Olympics. Mostly during the Olymp during the times of the Winter and Summer Olympics, I remember back in 2000 they started airing this on uh, the Cartoon Network Express. I mean, not Cartoon Network, but on Cartoon Network Saturday afternoons because of the Olympics that were taking place that year. So anyway, that is the uh, broadcast history so far of Laugh Olympics. Now. It did come out with a few VHS tapes. I think maybe four or five VHS tapes. Unfortunately, no DVD release has been made, although I think I've heard rumors of one being released real soon. I don't know when or where that's going to happen, but I've heard rumors that this is one of the uh, shows, Hanna Barbera shows, that you know the WB home video is considering releasing. Now, like I said, it was a parody slash satire of the of the Olympics itself of the Olympics itself. Now the reason it was a parody and satire is because they not only did regular Olympic events, but they also did their own unique events. I mean they went all over the world. I mean sure they had the skiing events, the polo events, the baseball, you know, the uh, the table tennis and all that. But they had different events, very unique events that you only see in a parody of Olympic Games or Olympic show. 
Uh, they had events like going, walking around a, a high wire or a tightrope over the Grand Canyon. They had they had the characters rocketing and racing to the moon, if you were rockets. Uh, they had them, um, you know, racing seahorses under the city of Atlantis and saving mermaids. Or in this case, a Cindy Bear mermaid, because the other mermaids didn't want to be a part of this event. And so Cindy had to take their place. But like I said, they went all over the place. They did um, airplane races. And the one, the one unique factor about every episode is that they had three teams. The first team, like I said, the first team was, of course, the Scooby Doobies, which was based around that current 70s late 60s, early 70s flock of characters. And like I said, they had characters like Scooby and, Scooby and Shaggy, uh, Captain Caveman the Teen Angel, they had Donald Mutt and Blue Falcon, and they had Hong Kong Fooey, and I think a few others. The other team was the Yogi Yahooies, which was mostly 50 and 60s characters. Of Yogi, Boo Boo, Cindy, Quick Draw, Huckleberry, Wally Gator, Hokey Wolf, uh, they even had Great Bape in there, even though he was made in the 70s. But he was put on the Yogi... In the 70s, he was put on the Yogi Yahoo's because of his anamorphic nature. And then, of course, you can't have a show like this without a bad guy, a team of bad guys or a team of villains. And some of them were inspired by characters that had always been in hanna Barbera shows. And the uniqueness about these, this team of villains, known as the Really Rottens, was that you could almost be guaranteed that every episode they would try something to cheat. That's right, they would try something to cheat their way to victory. Now sometimes they were lucky enough to win without cheating, eating, eating, and sometimes they were lucky enough to tie as well. But most of the time, but most of the time when they would cheat, they were thinking they would get away with it, they would always end up being caught. And they would always end up in maybe third place. Sometimes they'd be lucky enough to make it to second, but mostly be third. And sometimes they'd be still at the bottom, they wouldn't even score. But uh, overall, this is a very, very good uh, family series. Very uh, series for the family and also for kids. Sort of the hanna Barbera answer for the Olympics to the kids. But it's very funny, it's very unique. You know, it's probably the only show so far, and if any animation studios besides Disney with House of Mouse, that has all the main characters of all three errors in one of all of two cartoon errors in one show. It's the only show so far to do that, and I'm hoping they do bring it out to DVD. These I recorded off a of VHS tape I have of some of the episodes, uh, uh, VHS tapes I have of the episodes. So, I, like I said, I can only hope that they do that with Lap Olympics, that Warner Brothers brings out a DVD on them. Because that would be great. Now, I'd like to see the back history and find out why this was made. But I think we got a good idea. But uh, that's all I could say on the cartoon flashback, episode 5 of Lap Olympics. I hope you all liked it, and I will talk to you all next time. I'm Brian Walmer saying God bless, and have a good Tuesday afternoon. Peace.